Today we're going to have some fun with hops. <laughs> you may be wondering why is Kelly wearing giant gloves? Because Kelly's allergic to hops. That's why. <laughs> Take one for the team today because hops are a really neat ingredient. You can use them in a lot of different ways, super, super large scale, the whole way down to little boutonnieres. So today we're going to do an overhead hanging um, type of an arrangement using the bar up here. Um, we've got hops, a little bit of lemon leaf, some dahlia, tuberose, cosmos, gomphrina. It'll be fun. Uh, that's the ingredients that we're working with. Let's talk a little bit about the supplies that we have. This is uh, just a simple small board from Lowe's. This type of um, this type of design that we're about to make is something that you might attach to a beam that already exists in the venue that you're using, or it may be something that you need to hang um, to be lower from a beam in the venue. So if you're using it, if, if you need to attach, you can use this method to attach it directly to the beam and just kind of pretend that this is the beam at your venue. Or you can use the same kind of materials that we're using here. This one is a little bit narrow. It's not a two before. Two befores are pretty heavy. Uh, so I like to keep my mechanics light, but still weight bearing. We're not gonna put a ton of weight on this. So this will be adequate for what we're working on today. If you need to attach this to a beam, you can just simply drill a hole through the board and put a rope through, tie the rope and a double knot there at the end, make sure it's nice and secure. And then you can throw that up over your beam and um, get everything connected that way. So that's an idea if you need to rig it on something else. So we'll get started here. I'm gonna use some lemon leaf or salal foliage as a base. And then we're gonna work in our uh, little, I have some little oasis pieces. And then we're gonna go add in the hops around those. So, do you have to do this exactly like I do it? No, there's more than one way to do things. And I think that's an important distinction to make. So, you might um, see this and think of a way that you can be, you know, more efficient or faster or, you know, something this, this sparks a little note of inspiration. So please feel free to adjust as you need to. And I also wanted to mention, I have just a little delivery box that I'm using. Um, Dad and I put these together, but they flip upside down really wonderfully if you need to use them as a little step stool. So this is something that I love to have on event day because it's multifunctional and it doesn't take um, up extra room in my car. So we'll get started by just putting a little bit of this onto our form and I'm gonna use zip ties to do this. You could use wire or tape if you wanted to as well. That is up to you. Everybody has their preferences there too. I'm gonna put a little above, a little below. And I'm not worried about covering the form per se. I just wanted to have a little bit a little bit of a base to start out with. The hops are really gonna do most of the work for us here. But I think sometimes it's nice to have an alternate leaf shape and shade in design. So that's why we're gonna go with these. It's also pretty budget friendly, which is another reason why I love it. And it really is a workhorse. The bunches are big, so you can uh, use it throughout your event. It doesn't have a great shape for centerpieces in my opinion or bouquets, but I think for installation work it's pretty great. And there are ways that you can use it, you know, in centerpieces and bouquets too if you needed to, but I prefer something that's a little bit less Stiff, but this is great for garland making as well. Okay, next 
we're going to add in the oasis. And I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do that. The first thing that I have is a little igloo oasis cage. And it has the little things that you can attach a zip tie or a wire to to put it on the structure. So I'm just going to space this out evenly. And since this piece is going to be viewed from the, um, from the ground up, I'm going to focus on putting the flowers low. And these, I kind of like to run them through the actual Oasis pieces because sometimes these little side pieces can pop off and I just would like to avoid that. The other option that you can do is a little bit more budget friendly, but a little, also a little bit more labor intensive. I've taken a, just a regular cube of Oasis and I cut it into eight sections. And you can use this with a little bit of chicken wire instead of the cage if you need to. So I have a piece of chicken wire cut here and I'm just going to wrap it around the oasis and this simply keeps the oasis from breaking into pieces once you get a lot of flowers in there. And then I'm just going to take that and attach it right to the form. And you can run it through the wires if you'd like for just a little bit of extra extra hold. And I think on this one I'm gonna do five pieces. And I'll put the measurement for the finished product and the recipe for how many flowers we use so that if you'd like to create something similar for something that you're doing, you can easily swap out the materials and the quantities and just have a better idea of how to quote the event out. raindrops. Let's add in some hops next. Let me get my gloves. These are pretty big. I sort of imagine, now they remind me of Jack and the, be the Beanstalk a little bit or something. I feel like I should yell bombs away and just throw it over.
mention that if you haven't had hops before, there is the, my skin just breaks out in a rash, um, but there also is an odor associated with hops. They smell a little bit like fish when you open up the box. So just be aware of that. It's not, um, you know, it's not a deal breaker, but if you're pretty sensitive to smell, it's just, it's gonna be something that's a little bit unusual. You're gonna wanna watch out for. Now, if you can't um, flip it over top of your beam, like I did, you could just, or if you wanted to have just a little bit more drape or something like that, you could attach the hops with zip ties just going along the main vein of the vine. And I apologize, I'm gonna to have to put my back towards you just for a second, but I want to just kind of assess and trim out some pieces in the hops that are maybe browning or too long. Just get the shape of this. This is the shape component for this arrangement. So I just want to get the silhouette looking really nice. And since these arrangements go so high in the sky and it's going to be dim and dark in the area that you're working, you don't have to, you know, obsess over every single little piece. Since these are something that come out of the box, out of water, there may be a little bit of wilting and browning, especially if you're trekking them around in the sun. But for the most part, they're pretty sturdy. And I'll put a source for these out of Oregon that ships in your notes for those of you that are here in the States. And if you aren't, um, hop on community and chat with some people that are from your area and you guys can come up with a great source to find these where you are. Now this would be a fun arrangement that you could, after you got all of your flowers and things in, you could add some hanging candles down in here, like little twinkle lights, or you could do actual little electronic twinkle lights. Okay. And we may edit that a little bit as we go along, but it's cleaned up and it's in a better place. Um, in a better place than it was when we initially popped it up there. The next thing that I'm going to kind of look for is just any obvious areas that are exposed, where our mechanics are exposed. And I just want to give those a little bit of attention before I start getting all of my flowers organized and incorporated in there. So I'm going to pop back in there with a little bit of the lemon leaf foliage. And I think we're mostly done handling the hops. I can handle them a little bit, but don't want to give them a big bear hug. So this area right in here needs some attention. So I'm actually, I see a good opportunity here to just adjust the way that this vine is hanging. And that'll help with part of this. And then I might tuck just a little bit of this in and now this, uh, the hops can be used as a, a base or a way to hold flowers in place as well, which is Fabulous. All of those 
stems that are crossing over and weaving together. Grapevine is a great thing for that as well. Maybe if you needed to do a big overhead installation, grapevine acts as a similar type of thing, creating a net, a natural looking net for flowers and things to rest in. And then another thing that I love to have on site whenever I go places is some moss because you can just quickly pull off some pieces and fill in. So I'll do a little bit of that now and then before I wrap up um, a project like this, I like to squeeze my, squeeze my eyes together just like you would when you're um, putting Christmas lights on a tree just to see if every see if there's anything that's standing out you just kind of squeeze your eyes and look for that um, board you'll see if there's any places that need to be covered with a little bit of moss Another idea for covering mechanics is to spray paint the piece that you're using. So this board we could have spray painted a green color and that would have helped as well just to camouflage. So if that's something that you're very sensitive to, it's another little option for you. Next, we're going to add tube rows. I think I may have left this off the ingredients list whenever I first started talking about them. I love tube rows. They smell fantastic. These are so great to have in brides bouquets and on tables and things like that where people will pass them. Up here, their scent is going to be overlooked a little bit, but their shape is important for this type of arrangement. We need a few things that are long and stretching. So I've done such a great job covering up my mechanics that I can't even <laughs> see where my little oasis houses are. Okay, there's one. So we are gonna use, this isn't gonna be one of the the big showstopper in this arrangement is the cosmos. So we're just gonna put a few of the tube rows in there and I'm using them to mark where my oasis is hanging out. So and then here And I'm, today I'm working on uh, primarily the front side so that you're able to see and experience putting this together. But as you do it for your event, you're gonna wanna keep walking between all the sides and you're also gonna wanna create depth. So um, for example, you can see how I have a tube rose hanging out back here in this area. And that's to draw the eye back in and through the arrangement. If they were all on the front at the same level, it wouldn't be quite as interesting for the people who are enjoying the flowers. Next, we're gonna um, put the cosmos in. I love how light and airy these are. They're really fun flower to include in your designs.
another consideration, um, I know I talk a lot about the, <laughs> the allergy of hops, but just keep that in mind if you have people that are working for you. Um, you, know, you don't want to put somebody in a place where they're feeling like really uncomfortable and itchy all day. So take that into mind. If somebody seems like they're sensitive to it, put them on a different task. Just a good thing to know in advance. Keep everybody on your team happy and healthy. And as far as placement for these, I'm just keeping an eye on even, evenly spreading them throughout the arrangement. And we have dahlias that we're going to add. And whenever I put those in, I'm going to concentrate on making an interesting line for the eye to follow with those. So these are just kind of little, Guess you could call it a fill if you wanted to, but this is just our main cover. In a centerpiece, these would be great as a finishing flower because of their light and airy quality and just the shape of their stems. But this one can transition in quite a few ways. It's great for in this situation, a fill as well. I have a, I've left a few of the Cosmos in my little bucket over here. So after I get most of the, I go through and get all of the components in, then I like to just take a quick peek and sometimes there's an area that needs a little bit more. So I have a few left over that I can go back in and make those adjustments if needed. but. I think it's nice to get through all of the, the initial placement of all of your ingredients before you perfect. And if you run out of flowers to perfect with and you're kind of moving, moving things around, it just takes up a little bit more time, but no worries if you have to do that sometimes, it happens. So I've got my pretty white dahlias here. Since they're the largest uh, component here, it's where the eye is gonna naturally be drawn to. So we're gonna focus on creating a few little focal points within this large, large arrangement using these dahlias. And we're gonna do that by grouping them together within different levels and by arranging them in a little bit of a line. This is called an implied line like a connect the dots line. If you were looking up at the stars at night, how all the different constellations, all the different constellations you sort of use the stars as your point to form all those different constellations. It's similar here to what we're doing with these flowers. And if this arrangement is going to go to a point where there is kind of a, an, it's at an entry point maybe where the eye would be drawn up, you could, at the center of your arrangement, you could, you know, focus on taking one of these larger flowers up high. You're gonna wanna keep an eye especially underneath though. This is really where guests are gonna view and enjoy it. So you're gonna wanna add some in there 
at varying levels too. have a bride that's getting married in the fall that just really loves peonies you can definitely show her dahlias I call them the the peony of fall and usually once they've seen one they're um, excited about them especially the big dinner plate ones they're becoming a little bit more more well known with the girls but some people just don't know what they are and haven't seen them before, so a little bit of education goes a long way. And a word on dahlias, they uh, can be pretty tough if they come wholesale, I think, to keep looking fresh and great. So I recommend finding a local source if you're able to. and. The Association of Cut Flower Growers is a great place to go for that. You just really lose a lot of the life of the dahlia since they are a, short, a shorter lived flower, their vase life. Typically you can expect to be from maybe two to four days I would say. So if you think about that they were cut at the farm and then they were shipped and then they came to you, they've already used up quite a bit of their, their life expectancy. So I think it's a good idea if you're able to, to get those local. And if you hop on community, there's a little discussion going on about wholesale dahlias and some things that people have been trying. I um, haven't experimented with the wholesale you know, methods with chemicals and things like that to maintain them. I just, I just didn't, didn't want to go there because I have some great local sources. So it just felt kind of like a waste to me, but they're sharing um, some possible solutions and things that you can do to keep those alive there. So next, this is Gomfrino. I'm just looking for my oasis and popping it in there. This is a nice little kind of fun little accent piece. Again, don't forget underneath and like I mentioned the other side as well and I pulled one more ingredient that I was thinking about putting in this arrangement and it's just a little bit of Queen Anne's lace as our finishing flower So after I work in the gonfrina, we'll go there next.
some of these pieces of gum free and I'm having a hard time finding my oasis spot so you could have on hand I like to travel to installs with a few water tubes filled up so you could have those on hand just to pop your stems in and then you can use the grid of your hops and put your flowers in that way if you're if you have more than you can do with the oasis or if you would just prefer to do that instead of oasis it's kind of a matter of preference i think Found it there. All right, let's move on to our last ingredient, the Queen Anne slice. And we're just going to use this to sort of finish it off and add a little bit of lightness to the design. So I want this to come out further than all of the other ingredients that I've put in here so far. Since it is the last light airy piece. Again, I'm just spreading these out like I did with the Cosmos pretty evenly, but if you wanted to use them to accent a specific line or grouping, you could pay attention to that as well. All right, I'm going to... Um, step away for a minute and just take a quick peek, see if there's anything that I want to change or edit, and then I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, we'll be right back. And I'm back to wrap up. I went ahead and I just, I did that little squinty eye and looked for any pieces of the mechanics that were sticking out. And I covered this with a little bit of moss and a few um, hops up there. And then I just wanted to show you before we sign off for today, um, two little examples of something that you might like to use or include in a design like this. Um, and the sources for those, this is a little uh, candle globe from Accent Decor. And then um, this is from, I got this in New York at the flower market whenever I was there. So I'll show you, I'll put the links to these things in your notes, but I just wanted to show you how I attach them real quick. I just use a simple piece of floral wire to put those together and I just make a little paper clip like piece to attach everything. So uh, if you use a gauge wire maybe like between 16 and 20 you should probably be and you'll you'll be in good shape with something like that. 16 is a little bit heavier than 20 um, so depending on how heavy your, your piece is that you're using. But I just wrap that up there, find a nice strong piece of the hops vine and attach it like that. I like these covered globes just because the flame is completely, you know, covered and you don't really have to worry as much about, um, you know, fire and things like that with something that is completely covered on top. These ones are a little bit, you know, you just have to be a little bit careful, maybe put them a little bit lower in your arrangement or your design. Candles do generate quite a lot of heat. 
So even if it doesn't catch on fire, it might cause it to brown or something like that. So just something that you want to keep in mind if you decide that you wanted to put um, some lighting to this arrangement, you want to keep it pretty low. So, and just fishing, fishing wire is what I like to attach those with, but it's good to prep all those things in advance because whenever you're doing a big install, um, oh, time just flies. So if you have all of your uh, fishing wire pre-attached, you can just store them that way and then they're always ready to go and you don't have to rewire each time. So that is, that is the oversized hanging arrangement. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that it encourages you in your next, um, your next design. So we'll be back soon with another project for you to try. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.